Hey everybody, this is Cole with Boring Rifles. I want to talk today about our titanium muzzle brakes and our self-timing muzzle brakes. And I kind of want to show you real quick how easy it is to put a self-timing muzzle brake on there. So I'll bring you in uh, so you can see it as I do it. We'll go from there. All right, there's a couple reasons why people love self-timing brakes. Uh, number one is you can install it yourself. You don't need a gunsmith to install these. We send you out the correct diameter uh, for whatever caliber you need and for whatever thread pattern you need. Um, the other is for people that use suppressors a lot. So if they want to take this off, um, put a suppressor on and then put this back on when they're done with the suppressor, it's a great thing too. The issue that I've seen with um, blended brakes is the more people torque them on and off, it actually starts crushing the material and they don't time exactly the same way every time. Now that all of course depends on the material, but that is why self-timing brakes are becoming more and more popular just because it is super simple to do them and you can time them every time. So you don't have that issue. So next I'm going to show you exactly how we recommend installing our uh, self-timing brakes. Now you can see I've got the threads. They come in either 5H24, half 28, or three quarter. Um, most threads on most rifles, uh, if they're heavier barrel or three quarter, or excuse me, 5 eighths, and if they're a smaller barrel, they're half 28, like uh, 556 or something like that. So this is our 5H24. Um, this is a little bit older model. Our newer one comes with more of a flats design, so you can use a wrench, um, but this one's in half 28, so I can't use it. The easy way to do this is I just kind of make sure my nut is moving freely and I just try to turn it on, screw it in to where it's almost set. And as you can see, the, the top of the brake has the three ports for directional up. We don't want to put anything on the bottom of the brake so that you don't get crap in your face when you're shooting. So I want it to index right about there. So not quite 100% uh, perpendicular with the barrel, but just barely off. And then I, what I want to do is I want to tighten this nut really good. And usually you can do this pretty dang good with your hand. And then what I want to do is if you have a screwdriver or something that uh, you know is can fit through the ports, I recommend and then don't push this because you don't want to bend the material in here, but you just kind of want to index and torque that just like that. Now it's straight up and down perpendicular and now it's not going to come loose. So first off I index the nut and then I index the brake over to fit. Now it's not going to come loose and I don't have to worry about that. A lot of times people don't do this correctly and they try to do it and then they try to tighten it this way and it doesn't put enough pressure on here to hold it correctly. So if you mount it this way, you're not gonna have any problems and uh, it's gonna be good. These brakes take about 30 to 38% recoil out. So if you're shooting a bigger caliber and it's super you know, recoil sensitive, put one of these on. I guarantee you're gonna like it. Um, yes, they are a little loud, but the way that we designed this, this back brake kind of goes more straight out and then these next two brakes come back. So it kind of directs the blast away from the shooter space. So if you have any more questions, of course, reach out to us, sales at boringrifles.com or hit us up on Instagram or Facebook. Thanks for watching.